Welcome back. This is a tutorial about grouped convolutions and it would make more sense if you have a correct understanding of convolutions, kernels and filters. My previous tutorial was exactly on that subject. That said, here is one minute recap of it. On the screen are shown two input channels. Every input channel will have a corresponding kernel. So two input channels implies that you will have two kernels. However, one kernel per input channel is not really sufficient. This is where we make use of a notion of filter banks. And by default, you have one filter bank in a convolutional layer. But you can ask for more banks and that would result in multiple kernels per input channel. Here on the screen, I am showing you two filter banks. So every input channel now has two kernels. Again, check the previous tutorial in which I explain and clarify the difference between kernel and filters and all the involved operations to really truly understand this, this new type of convolution. Here I am showing which kernel is associated with which input channel and that we are adding the feature maps. The same process is for filter bank two. So this is fine, but now Consider the situation when you have very large number of input channels. By the way, output of one layer is the input of another layer in neural networks. So you may start with three input channels. So your image has three channels RGB, but very quickly in the middle of the neural network, you will start to have many feature maps and these feature maps will become the input channels to the subsequent layer. For example, if you have 64 input channels, you will have 64 kernels per filter bank. And it should be clear that the larger the number of kernels, the more computations will be required as well as more memory will be required. And group convolution is a technique to reduce the number of kernels and thereby reducing the computational requirements. Let me explain how grouped convolutions work by using more than two input channels. In this example, now I have created four channels, C1, C2, and C3, C1, C2, C3, and C4. If we go by our regular rule, then in filter bank one, we will have four kernels, one for each input channel. And it would be the case for filter bank two as well. Now, as an optimization to reduce the number of kernels, we make a rule. The rule is that the kernels in the filter bank one will only convolve with some channels, some input channels, while the kernel in filter bank two will convolve with the remaining channels. So far, kernels in both the banks have convolved with all the input channels. Another way to say is that only a subset of input channels will be visible to the filter bank one, while another subset will be visible to filter bank two. And we achieve this by grouping the input channels. Let's say we make a group of two. We have four channels here. If we are making a group of two, every group is going to have two input channels. And then we suggest that the first and second channel will belong to group one and third and fourth will be belong to group two. We then associate group one with filter bank one. Again, as I said earlier, filter bank one will not even see the channels in group two. Since according to filter bank one, now there are only two input channels. It will only contain two kernels k1 for channel 1 and k2 for channel 2, like this. And the input channels of group 2 will have their kernels in the filter bank 2. So this time kernel 1 of filter bank 2 will be for channel 3 and kernel 2 of filter bank 2 will be for channel 4. Since there are two kernels in the filter bank one, there will be two feature maps. The situation is same for filter bank two. So we run our correlation machine and get the feature maps. 
And in this example, we would want two output channels. So we will add the feature maps from both the banks and we will get their respective outputs. Let's look at the code using which we can validate our understanding. We will be using four input channels, two groups and two output channels. The number of groups is specified in the convolution layer like this. And recall that from the last tutorial that out channels, out underscore channels argument in the convolutional uh, layer con1d or con2d will control the number of filter banks. Here we have two out channels, which means that we will have two filter banks. Now, normally for every input channel, you would have a corresponding kernel that is four kernels per bank in this case. But as I showed you in the visualization earlier, by using groups, we would have two kernels per bank. And you can see it is the case here. The weights in the convolution layer now only have four entries, four kernels. Let's now do the correlation operation using NumPy API. We'll be using the kernel one from bank one with channel one. So first channel, this is the first channel. This is the first kernel from bank one. And similarly, uh, we'll be doing it for the second channel, but with second kernel from bank one. And then we will add the feature maps. And here we are using kernel one from bank one with channel three. Look at line number eight. And in line and in next, we will do it for the fourth channel. So kernel two of bank two is going to convolve with the fourth channel. Let's verify the result by using what PyTorch convolution layer is outputting. As you can see, it is the same as what we have computed manually using the NumPy API, which means our understanding is correct. And we have the mechanics behind the group convolution nailed down. It is kind of apparent that this grouping notion would help reduce the number of kernels, especially in the middle layers of your deep neural network and thereby helping with computation and memory requirements. This is what I told you earlier, and this is what was done in LXNet, the first winner of ImageNet competition in 2012. Essentially, this is the paper that jump started the advancements in computer vision. Now, the interesting part is that at that time, the authors of the paper did not have access to big GPUs like the way we have nowadays. And so they engineered their solution so as to make the neural network train in the first place. So their usage of group convolution was, was a necessity. And as the field grew, now that we have access to big GPUs, uh, this engineering optimization was forgotten. Until 2017, when a paper titled Aggregated Residual Transformations showed that the group convolutions are not only saving computations, but they are helping with the classification accuracy as well. The paper is proposing an architecture called ResNext. It's not ResNet, ResNext. And as you can see, Kaming He is also one of the authors of this paper, the guy who invented ResNets. Now, how group convolutions help with classification accuracy as well, and how ResNext architecture is using them. This is something I will explain in another tutorial in due time. I hope this tutorial was helpful uh, and thanks for your time and patience and see you in another tutorial. Bye for now. Bye bye.